Hi, welcome to LVI TV, your weekly dental news source. I'm Bill Dickerson. Scientists at the University of Washington have discovered that common genetic variants of metallothionein, a protein that has the capacity to bind heavy metals, increases the susceptibility of children to mercury toxicity from dental amalgams. In a study of 330 children from Casapia School System in Lisbon, Portugal, they found that boys carrying the variants were more prone to neurobehavioral deficits associated with mercury. Neurobehavioral performance on the children was evaluated annually from baseline through seven years of follow-up after the initial placement of dental amalgams or composite fillings. Wow, who got to make the decision on who received what? Talk about the luck of the draw. Apparently kids in Portugal are equivalent to guinea pigs. Impaired performance was noticed primarily with visual spatial acuity and learning and memory, with some additional impacts on attention and motor function. Seems that girls can handle mercury better than boys, but then what don't they handle better? The author said that the findings may have important public health implications for future strategies aimed at protecting children and adolescents from the potential health risks associated with mercury exposure. You think? In a related study, the European Commission recommends banning of dental amalgam. Conducted on behalf of the European Commission, it recommends phasing out dental amalgam use over the next few years owing to mercury's negative impact on the environment. Don't you all ever wonder why it's bad for the environment, but it's okay for the oral environment? The report explains that mercury-free alternatives are still not used widely in many European member states. One of the reasons is that many dentists are simply not trained to apply new methods. Yeah, so let's keep poisoning our patients because it's just too much trouble to learn a new technique. If done right, they will last longer than amalgams. Ask me how I know. In the European Union, dental amalgam is the second largest mercury use. The study has three recommendations. One, improving enforcement of the European Union waste legislation regarding dental amalgams. I got an idea. Why not just take the amalgam scraps and put them in someone's mouth? Apparently, it's the only safe place to store amalgam scraps. The usual steps taken to comply with these requirements are the presence of amalgam separators in dental practices, adequate maintenance of these separators in order to ensure a minimum of 95% efficiency, and to have amalgam waste collected and treated by companies with adequate authorization to handle this type of hazardous waste. Two, encouraging member states to take national measures to reduce dental amalgam use while promoting the use of mercury-free filling materials. Three, banning the use of amalgam entirely. Amalgam environmental effects have been much discussed. Sweden has already phased out dental mercury, while Denmark, Finland, and the Netherlands and Italy have all reduced amalgam use significantly. Other countries, including Germany, Spain, Italy, and Austria, either have restrictions or guidelines on amalgam in place. But not the good old USA and Canada. Give me amalgam or give me death. People, this whole discussion seems silly to me. There is a much better alternative anyway. Safer, lasts longer, makes the tooth as strong as a healthy tooth if done properly. While amalgam not only makes the tooth less strong, it expands as it ages, thereby fracturing the teeth they're put in, which is why many refer to amalgams as temporary crowns. So what do you think of the use of amalgam? Let us know your thoughts below. This is Bill Dickerson, and we'll see you next time on LVI TV. have such a wealth of knowledge that you can pick up little pearls here and there, that's when you really see how much you don't know. And adults revealed that only 6% would seek a second opinion for dental work. 70% of people seek a second opinion for major homework.